Hello and welcome! My name is Hero and this is my Let's Play series of the Ultimate Cellars 4 where we are playing as Ethiopia. As you can see we have restarted because, well, I fucked up in the last uh, try uh, and I fucked up bad. I did some small to medium mistakes along the way, like for example uh, expanding our capital instead of the gold mine when trying to buy, buy the institution. Like not trying to get a discount on buying development when I got the institution. Like keeping expanding so it may be even more exp expensive to buy the institution. And basically this all ended up building up to the point that when I then did the final mistake which was um, to wars against Yemen and Duran, uh, I already had a huge stat on my side from the, um, from the development. And I was behind my neighbors in tech because of the, all the um, points I'd spent. So basically we were fucked and then it just like exploded at that point. And we were at the point in the end of that episode uh, where I stopped the last episode. Where it would probably have taken me three, three, four episodes to just get back to a point where we could start expanding again. And besides that being extremely boring both for me, more frustrating for me, probably boring for you. Uh, it also would probably have meant that um, we could have missed a chance against Memlock. So rather than just do that and me having a bad time, I'm just restarting. This also means we can re restart in 119. Woo! Or at least in the 119 beta patch that we have going on right here. So you can see things are pretty different from the style of the game. Ethiopia, well, first off, there's the graphical things you can see here. The wasteland is now th showing through and all on this uncolonized provinces. And personally, I think that's a nice, nice addition. It just makes it seem a little bit prettier than the gray color of before. Um, then you can see Ethiopia is also very different. Uh, suddenly, Ethiopia is smaller. We have two vassals, and these two provinces are new. Uh, if we look at the trade goods map, you, you'll also see something new. <gasps> There's suddenly an extra gold mine. Uh, it's one of our vessels, so we won't be able to get it right away, but it's gonna help us out, I think. Also, Elodia and Mercuria has been uh, giving some provinces to uh, Be Beja and uh, Dangola. So that's also nice, meaning that we can go toward uh, maybe only... yeah. That's, that's important to my strategy, and let me explain that then. So, the thing I did wrong, as I said, was I um, spent way too much points on buying up development to get the Renaissance. I did it in the wrong province. I did it in my, in my uh, capital instead of in the gold mine. So my thought was that the capital city gives a bonus, but the bonus is 8.4%. So that's actually quite tiny when you compare it uh, to the um, to the mountain province here, because they're both mountain provinces. They both have that annoying modifier of minus twenty for for being highlands. So we might as well develop a gold mine. We we want to develop that anyway. So by only developing one of those two provinces, we're actually ending up saving points. Uh, the way it works with buying up uh, Renaissance or any other institution is you spend roughly 2,000 development points before modifiers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, get the burgers to be as influential and loyal as possible. And um, I'm not sure if we can get them up actually, because um, the problem is of course that uh, there isn't a lot of uh, provinces that we can actually give to them, but we can give Kaffa to them and make that really powerful, so maybe that can, can help, um, but we'll see. If we can't get the burgers, we'll just have to pay the full price. Anyway, the second thing I did wrong was to expand too much before I actually embraced the Renaissance, which cost me a bunch of money. So this time I'm only gonna expand to the most important things before I get that um, before I get the Renaissance so I'm gonna take uh, this province of course which means I have to expand either through Beji or 
through Alodia and Dengola and get up here. Uh, I'm of course going to uh, prefer Beji here because they are very small. And I'm going to take uh, these two small states and Kaffa for the gold mile. Whether I take this, these two uh, depends on well if we end up in war with them or not. Uh, if I get bored, uh, and then if we have manpower and nothing to do after that, I might do a a um, humiliation war against someone just to get that extra monarch point going on for me. So anyway, let's get started. So first things first, let's look at missions. Um, the reason I'm looking at our missions first is because they change when you add rivals and I wanted to see if we have a mission on one of these small guys and we indeed do. So let's check that. And I would probably have gone away if we t added rivals first. So those are the things you need to think about uh, when you add rivals. If you want uh, if you want to attack your rivals right away, add your rivals first. If you want, want to attack someone else first, make sure to check for their mission first. Anyway, now we go for rivals. We can add Aduran and Adele. That's a little worse than before because some of these guys have gotten too small for us to rival them, but uh, hey, that's how it, how it is. Um, still, ooh, definitely need to get rid of this guy as soon as possible. Might actually... Are we actually not gaining any prestige? As soon as we have some prestige gain, I, I think I'm just gonna fire him and take, uh, take advantage of that. Um, I cannot get fire. If we have negative prestige right now, we are gonna have a positive decay, I think. So, I'm just gonna fire him. Yeah, now we have positive decay and we can get, regain it as fast as possible. And get a new air as fast as possible. So, um, he's fired. We don't really have any money for hiring advisors. Can at least uh, mothball our one fort down from two. Uh, we're gonna send a well. How much army do we actually send down here? We need to send five. I think we need to send five infantry and the cavalry, so we have a full front line against him. Twist can just stay in the capital, so they don't accrue too much uh, attrition down there. And we also need to choose. Coptic Faith, why can't I do that? Well, apparently I had to have that only open. So we also sent the monks to Manisters because we need the missionary strength if we want to convert anything. And then we just convert this province, I guess. Another thing I did wrong last time was uh, I didn't really... Th this is kind of th something that I forgot because I've been playing so such huge nations. When you're playing a small nation, it's a good idea to evaluate every single province if you want to have the income for not all um, for any price or if you just want to make sure that they don't rebel so for example these shitty provinces like even if i pay to get them states and get the autonomy down they're gonna give me next to nothing on the other hand if i do that they'll spawn at least one maybe two rep rebellions before uh, i get the um what's it called Separatism to go away, and that's gonna be a lot of manpower and a lot of annoyance. And if it spawns at the wrong time, it's gonna also increase that separatism, making it even more like maybe three, four, five uprisings. So, with shitty provinces like this, you might wanna in instead raise autonomy, which more often than not is enough that they'll never spawn a rebellion. Especially if you can send your troops up there, or it might, it, at least enough that they'll only ever spawn one rebellion. And then once that had taken away, you can then add them as states and, and so on. So that's what I'm going to do with all of this shit land. Um, I'm going to try to just uh, raise autonomy and never really have problems with rebels as much. Uh, which will hopefully save me a lot of manpower. So that's the plan anyway. So um, we got the mission, have a claim on him. So um, what about our diplomats? Well, since I'm not going to war with Medivetri in this one either, I think I'm gonna um, do an alliance with him. Uh, but I may maybe actually want to wait until I have... Hmm, let's think about this. 
So the thing is, Medribari, which I discovered, has a very old king, so I definitely want to marry him. But if I marry him, he asks me to ally him, and if he's allied with me, he might be a dick and... Um, and take some of his promises before me, which he's been doing in basically all all tries I did, both before recording and uh, when I recorded last time. Well, definitely one th one thing I want to do is build spy network here, and um, I think I also want to. Uh, start building spy network here as well because then we're ready to make the claim once we're done here. Let's improve relations with QQ. Oh, we need to keep that diplomat home for actually declaring this war, by the way. Yeah. I do kind of want the alliance here. Although, in a way, I would rather not have the royal uh, the personal union fire because waiting 50 years to integrate these provinces would just be annoying. So yeah, let's just go without alliance this time. It's not like he's gonna help me that much anyway. Like he can still step backstab me even if we are not in alliance, but um, at least then we'll have separate pieces. Uh, an alliance with Kaffa? No. By the bank of the Nile, glory to the Lord, Kwasai Ibrahim belongs to the Coptic tribal kingdom of Makuria. For many years, the great Christian city has pers persevered, and even and those surrounded by religious enemies on all sides, perched atop a cliff by the mighty Nile, Kwasai Ibrahim has remained a bastion of Christianity in Lower Nubia, even as the rest of the region fell into darkness. Now Makuria will utilize the city's great political and economical resources to spend, spread the word of the one true God throughout Nubia. So I think this is also a change uh, towards the ra last um, to one, towards 118, is that uh, the second Holy Island is now also held by a Coptic nation up here. Uh, the, the province itself is still uh, Muslim, but they're trying to convert it. So and they can convert it quite quickly because of the faithful liberated. So that'll do that, and we'll get the second uh, tenant of our faith pretty quickly. So, in the reality, we don't really need to go up here and and conquer it, but we're gonna do that anyway, <laughs> just to make sure that the Mamlocks don't do it. So let's uh, let's unpause. The Holy Heart of Ethiopia. Once Axum was the heart of ancient Axumite Empire, a bastion of Christian power situated at the crossroads of Africa, Arabia, and the Greco-Roman world. Among the obelisks and palace ruins, we have rebuilt the churches of this mighty nation of old. The greatest of them all is the Church of Our Lady Mary of Sion. It is the place where we crown our emperors, the descendants of Menelik I, who was the son of King Solomon and Queen of Sheba. It is here he brought the Ark of the Covenant. Every year, thousands of pilgrims come from the farthest reaches of our empire and beyond to visit this holy place. One small action will shine with God's infinite glory. Ten prestige. And lots of people doing lots of shit. And in ten days we can declare war, and he's actually allied to this guy. Which means I probably need... Uh, oh, we need an... A general. Let's get uh, a general. Uh, so we, we, even though this cost uh, cost us, we grant a general here. We get the military support. Might as well do the others. Well, um, uh, well, we can't do the burgers, but we can do this one. Uh, seek support of the clergy. Um, so I don't think we can get this up to. We can add 25, which would make it to 78. Yeah, so we can do that and get 150 admin points. And what we then do is we go and remove some of the nobility's power because he has way too much. Oh, I have to wait a little bit for that. But we can do that uh, within the first year and then we'll be fine. Okay. And we now have a general. And he's okay. 
I would rather have had someone with also that also had seeds, but this is definitely okay. Let's just do this. That means that this one army will be the one that's actually sieging down this province, and then this one will continue on and kill him. Again, I don't think I'll take all this land. I'll just take his money. Uh, basically because I want to save as many points as I can from the start of the game so we can get exploration early on and then start uh, developing towards the... Um, so does he have any other... He doesn't have any others. We might as well declare him a global legend and if I change my mind we can. So now he's gonna attack me into the mountains, um, and this this one is gonna join me. Might as well do this, and then we. I don't know why he's going this way. And our nice little vassal friends are doing their jobs. No, we don't want to marry Kaffa. Do want to marry our vassal though. The other mass vassal here is Sunni, so we can't really do anything about that. So, so at this point, we basically don't need full maintenance. So I'm just gonna go down to about half. And we got a new marriage, Itage. Oh, she's not too bad. I think we're still gonna get that scripted one uh, that we got last time. But let's hope so anyway. Well, let's actually stay down here and collect collect the goods. So we're making money now. So let's just use this to hire a Diplo Advisor. Why a Diplo Advisor? Well, because I'm gonna do a Diplo, diplo idea, so I wanna make most Diplo points. Also because we're not getting Diplo points from the estates yet. So we're kinda behind on that. I think once we're done with this wall, we'll be ready to go to war with Bija as well. Okay, so we're ready for this one to end. Um, we take all the money, so let's just march up here to get ready for, for him. Uh, again, this army we just put, put here. And I think we just go to full maintenance, so we're ready for that war. And then we end this. So how much would it actually cost if we took it all? It cost me... 60 more... 60... It cost me almost 100 points more. I think I'm gonna wait. Which means we're gonna do a separate piece with you. Take all your money. Uh, take your trade power. Which reminds me, we don't have our merchant place from the start of the game. Uh, so that should end. And then we take the piece with you, which is to take all of your money and all of your land. And we start coring that. And I think we take this province, the claim. And now none of these missions are interested. They are interesting. So let's call this guy back. We can also take this claim. 
and start fabricate or making spy network here. I'm gonna keep this diplomat there, or yeah, because might as well get um, get siege modifiers against him. Need to wait one month before we do this. Okay. Dongola. Who is Dongola? It's this nation. Oh well. I think we can beat them. Do they have other allies? No, so might as get, well again declare them uh, co belligerent. I was sending him on right away, <clears throat> so that if he were to, to, to declare war as well, um, I would actually get this territory. And how are we looking for money? Yeah, again, once again, I think I'm gonna turn off automatic uh, raising at least for the start of the game because there's there's no enemies for the start of the game that can actually go for that fortress, so. With proof in relations with in um in in a rare who is in a rare Why would we do that? That's just gonna give us problems. Basilize Matri Beri. Well we could do that. Yeah, let's do that. See if they attack us here. Yeah. Just gonna wait until he's locked then. Okay, that was a bad decision apparently. That was a very bad decision. And we've got an air, a 3 3 0. Are you kidding me? Why can't I just get a good air? Well, can't disinherit him, so nothing we can do about that. Ah, oh, that was annoying we lost those troops. That's a bad gamble. What I should have done was to just like keep walking the army in, and if he didn't, didn't attack, well, that's good enough because then my vassals were arriving. But I didn't think about the fact that I had vassals. Uh, lose prestige, even though we already have very low prestige. So, do we want to raise autonomy in this province? No, because I think, if I remember correctly, it's actually part of, yeah, it's part of the, um, the Kaffa area, which we actually want to add as a state, so we're going to have rebellion down there anyway. Are they different... So which rebels are we having down here? So they used to be in the area of Janeiro. Uh, they are different, and a different uprising. So let's just raise autonomy. 
make sure we don't get a, a rebellion from there. And we have enough to do a claim on Kaffa now. It's probably gonna be the next war we take. Well, we're not gonna take a war with both of them. Uh, with Kaffa, I like Minamera, so we'll take that in one go. Probably need to buy some extra soldiers before that though, because we got, just lost those. I have enough money now that I can probably probably go ahead and spend on points here and we can always fire them if something goes wrong. Could make this guy our vassal actually. I hadn't thought about that with uh, this guy. Could make them a vassal because that's not gonna cost uh, towards um, towards the Renaissance. Anyway, the birth of birth of the church today, fifty days after Easter, we observe Pentecost. On the sacred day, many centuries ago, our church was born. The Holy Spirit descended upon the apostles and the other followers of Christ as tongues of fire. Thus they spoke the word of the Lord in all the world's languages and converted thousands of souls to the true faith. Hereby began a new era, the Messianic era, uh, Messianic age of the kingdom of God. In memory of this great event, we hold one of the church's largest celebrations. Together we read from the Bible, sing joyous hymns, and kneel in prayer. So we can either spend a bunch of money and get tons of the true faith, or we can just do it as usual, which we'll do, because we don't want to spend money on points. So, uh, Dongolia here. What would it cost for me to vassal you? you 35 Diplo points. Okay, so the question is, is he a Muslim? Yeah, he is. So I don't want a Muslim. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna take his money. I'd rather conquer him, him then. Um, let's just take his money. Oh, trade power is not that, worth that much, so let's just uh, get as much um, prestige as possible. Let's just buy those four African Spearmen. And I guess that's all we, all we can take from him. So we raise autonomy in each of these. And we start fa fabricating on this guy. How are we now? Are we not making money? I just had plus up here. I thought we were making money, that would be insane. But we have our second uh, Coptic uh, faith. Uh, oh, we should have gotten this before we paid for those cores, but uh, it's probably not going to be that much of a difference. But I think we are going to take promote tutorial rights just for the little bit of um, admin points that we'll give along the way. And this is, of course, because he has uh, converted this for us. So now we only have to take it from him, and everything will be golden. The other thing we could do was just to ally him. Um, but uh, I just saw that this episode has gone on for quite a while, so it's going to be in the next one. So until then, have a good day.